delighted to present uh, some data about the Bimatoprost ring from Foresight Vision 5. I served as the PI for the Phase 2 study. I'm not employed by the company, uh, but have received research and travel support from them. I'm also pleased to report that the Phase 2 data, Phase 2 paper, was published today on the ophthalmology website, so you're welcome uh, to uh, download that paper today uh, at your, and read it more in more detail at your leisure. Just last month, I saw a patient who claimed religious compliance with her medications and her pressures were low, but her exam revealed a disc hemorrhage and the OCT confirmed progression, but the pharmacy records, which I have real-time access to at my institution, showed that she had not been refilling her dorzolamide and was only filling her latanoprost infrequently. This scenario is incredibly common. The literature suggests that many, perhaps even a majority of our patients fail to take their medications consistently beyond a year or two after diagnosis, and of those who do take their medications, uh, about a third have physical challenges in getting the drops into their eye. Obviously this is not good for their long-term uh, visual outcomes. Efficacy and uh, duration are critical parameters for any sustained release product, no doubt. Um, but these must be balanced with the patient experience and most importantly with safety. After all, glaucoma is a long uh, and slowly progressive disease and patients with substantial damage, uh, undoubtedly uh, it makes sense to accept some safety um, trade-offs in treating them. But among patients with early disease or ocular hypertension, it's my belief that <clears throat> safety must be the highest priority. We already select treatments based on a patient's disease severity, and adherence rates um, should also influence which product has the best profile uh, for each uh, patient. For example, monotherapy eye drops work well in early stage uh, patients uh, who take them reliably, and the bimatoprost ring, which we'll talk about today, has the safety and efficacy to treat the over one million individuals who are both non-adherent but have early stage disease. And these patients really do not have a good solution to them available to them uh, today. So let's focus on that large group, the non-adherent uh, patients with early stage glaucoma. This is the bimatoprost ring and it's been designed to address those patients who don't get their medications. It has been studied in phase two clinical trials and after the ring is placed under the upper lid into the fornix, the physician places the ring under the uh, lower lid using a uh, scleral depressor or Q-tip and the ring elutes uh, bimatoprost continuously and is replaced every six months. Before I review the clinical results, let me put in perspective though uh, how a product would need to uh, perform in the, uh, among these patients. In the OATS, we found that lowering intraocular pressure by 20% uh, decreased the relative risk of developing glaucoma by 60% among the subjects in that study. And uh, if we achieve this sort of efficacy level, we could prevent many patients from going on to develop substantial uh, vision loss. More than 300 patients have participated in phase one and two studies of the ring, and here's what we've learned. It's non-invasive, comfortable, and easy to retain. Uh, product safety has been excellent, and both patients and physicians like the ring. Lower risk patients typically see their ophthalmologists only twice a year, and one ring provides uh, clinically relevant pressure lowering uh, for six months. And the ring thus aligns well with the patient needs and doctor needs. I'm also excited about the opportunity to use the ring platform for other indications, and notably, the company is running a phase one study right now for a fixed combination of bimatoprost and timolol. Data from the uh, two consecutive uh, clinical trials uh, show the reduction in IOP in patients who wore the ring for up to 13 continuous months. To our knowledge, this is the, uh, no other company has presented sustained release data out uh, for more than six months of continuous use. The patients started on, in a randomized controlled study uh, shown on your left, and uh, during the study, the patients had a four to six millimeter drop in IOP uh, over the course of, this, of the six months, and this is the trial that was published this morning in ophthalmology. At six months, patients were, uh, were um, offered the opportunity to enter an open label extension as a safety study for regulatory purposes, and efficacy endpoints were secondary. 
And this study demonstrated continuous, uh, continued safety of the ring, and we observed sustain, sustained IOP reduction out to 13 months, and in fact, we're analyzing data out to 19 months. Adverse events were consistent um, with um, bimatoprost exposure, and we really encountered no um, uh, problems um, during the six-month uh, trial uh, beyond the minor things you see here. So in summary, we've shown that the rings are safe and well-tolerated and achieve sustained IOP reduction when used for over a year. The ring aligns well with the needs of more than a million Americans who are non-adherent early stage uh, patients, and our data show that they would likely to achieve consistent uh, safe IOPs with this product. The FDA has provided clear phase three guidance, and the company is poised to start clinical trials soon. I'm excited not only by the bimatoprost ring, but also by the opportunity to use the ring as a platform for other medications. And because the ring has sufficient volume to fit two or more drugs on board, Foresight Vision 5 is conducting an early stage study of a fixed combination ring with bimatoprost and timolol, and also has formulated rings for dry eye and allergy. Thank you very much. Thank you.